Now, that, this arose again from a member's query. I got an email saying, I'm using Easy Bus, and every so often some of the points flicker. There's something wrong with Easy Bus. And it turned out that the Easy Bus inputs were being triggered by a sequencer kit. And it was a sequencer kit that was getting intermittent operation. And it was making Easy Bus obviously flicker the, the servers. And then it turned out further, it's because they had one particular local that caused it. And it didn't have, it's DC by the way, and it didn't have the usual capacitor suppressor across the motor. They put the capacitor across it and it solved the problem. <laughs> but it got me thinking about the whole issue of noise suppression, because before they came back to me to say they solved it themselves, I was thinking, well, there's issues relating to debouncing switches and general noise suppression I thought we should look at. So let's just go back and have a quick look. There's more talk on, on forums and on the, the web generally about debounce than there is about noise suppression. So debounce is re relating to switches. That if you throw a switch to make contact, it doesn't just make contact, it actually bounces. And if you look at it, the switch bounce, that's what it looks like, something like that. So it's trying to, to transition from a high voltage to a low. The metal makes, the contacts make, and then unmake, and then make, and unmake, and then until they finally, finally make. Now, that can be an issue, or maybe not. It depends. Does it matter? And the answer is sometimes. If it's something that the, the code actually counts, for example, you only get four goes at something. So you throw the switch and, and push buttons, doesn't work. You throw the switch a second time, you only get a second, a particular number. So if you threw the switch and it pulsed eight times, it'll think you've had eight goes already. You know, so there's, there's times when the, the count is important. The other option is software that takes immediate action. So if, if it bounced, it may not matter, as long as it got to zero at one point, it'll carry on and start doing things. That's how uh, Easy Points works in the DF player and so on. The, 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 these kits, once you've triggered them, they carry on regardless. So the fact it's popped back, back up temporarily to higher voltage doesn't matter because it's already been triggered by the, the very first low pulse and off it goes. And that's fine. So it depends on the software itself, whether switch debounce is an issue. You can take your pick about the definition of switch bounce. So the first one says it'll happen up to 100 times. That time only one, two, it took five goes in that particular case. That's a, that's a real image, a real screen capture. It lasts at one millisecond, says this prestigious book. The Ganzel Group are a company that made tests with a whole range of different switches and then worked out what, what the figures were. And their worst case was that that debouse could last as much as 10 milliseconds. Mike Bolton, who I mentioned earlier, says 5 to 10. Paul Buck, these, these next three are, are all members doing their own tests. Oregon University say 1 to 5. So you can take your pick. So to be on the safe side then, we have to worry about, what, 20 milliseconds worth could be an issue to cover all bases. So what we're going to do about that? Well, let's, the starting point is that if you throw a switch and you have 100 millisecond before anything happens, you'll notice it. You throw a switch and the light comes on after 100 milliseconds, You'll perceive it as not being instant. Hold on, that took, there's a little delay there. You actually notice it. Whereas anything 50 milliseconds or less, you think it's happened immediately. And the, the bit in between depends on how good you, your perception is. So if, if we're working in the boundaries of there's a problem up to 20 milliseconds we bounce, and we know that Edmund under 50 
is regarded as the immediate, that's a, that's a starting point. So one, one option commonly used, take a reading and accept it as valid. The very first pulse you saw coming in was high, must be high, and ignore any, any, any bounce whatsoever, just carry on. In fact, stop taking any more readings for the next 50 milliseconds so you don't get any extra. Just accept the very first one is valid and reject anything else for the next 50 milliseconds and then you're clear of any bounce. Hmm. The other one is take a reading and if it's different from last time, wait a little while and take a reading again beyond the bounce period. And if it's still that new figure, then that's a valid one. You'll find that if you look at JAL code for the uh, includes for debounce and so on, and, and the ones that are in the, the Arduino ID, they use that kind of method. Check and then wait a while and then check again. And that works fine for switch debounce, but it's not good to solve the members problem. But if you want to know more, that's the, the link to an article that covers quite a bit of, of materials worth it's worth a read. Anyway, moving on, because noise suppression is different. The very first change that you get in might not be the change you want. There may be interference. For example, that you're trying to transition from a high level to a low level. You may have switch bounds, but you may have interference, little pulses that weren't meant to be going, going low here. We aren't meant to be going high here. And how do you eliminate those? The interface that's coming in, as I say, it could be continual, like commutation from a motor, or it could be sporadic, just interference blips. That's the, the sequencer that we were, we were talking about, that had the problem. It's got a trigger input. So we have to do something about what's coming in here to make sure that you only get valid pulses coming in. So there's the intention. We want to make sure we've got a procedure either in JAL or in the Arduino IDE that only returns a valid reading. So you've got to wait there until you get a real change. So it's going to wait till there's no noise. How does it do that? So you take 50 readings, and if they're all the same, then okay. So if you've got an initial interference pulse going low, and the rest are all high, something's gone wrong, you want to have 50 lows or 50 highs before you treat it as a higher low. And that stops any false triggering and returns something that's useful. So there's pseudo codes for it, and that's not the actual uh, JAL code or the Arduino code, you start off by saying, let's have a variable. We'll say that everything's okay is true. And then you take your reading from the input, whatever it happens to be. You assume that everything's okay to start off with. And then you look at the switch. Is the initial reading low? And if it is, take 50 other readings right after it. And if any one of them goes high, it's interference. If you take all 50 and they're all, every one of them returns a, a reading of low, then it's definitely low. You can carry on. And the same thing here, if your initial reading was high, take another 50 and if they're all high, that's fine. If any one goes low, something's gone wrong. Now that, Pseudocode works both therefore for noise suppression and switch bounce. It's more useful, it does both. Now there's the, an implementation of it. Procedure to get a valid reading, make a, a variable true. And if, if the trigger's low, then do 50. Wait a minute in between. So we do it 50 times once every millisecond, then roughly you're doing it over a 50 millisecond period, which covers the taking 50 within that danger zone, if you like. 
And the same happens if it turns out that the trigger has been set high. You take 50 more readings, and only if they're high and stay high do you regard it as a valid high reading. And you can add that code to the beginning of any you like that has a switch in it or a trigger input. So it's a general, a general purpose code. They can rewrite that in JAL or in the Arduino IDE and takes care of lots of interference cases. That's how I, I used it with, as the update to the sequencer code. We've now got a bit of code that will prevent uh, unwanted triggering in any of your modules. <laughs>